How you doing guys and welcome to part two of how to get a seven on your IA. If you're new to the series, make sure you subscribe to the channel so you catch all the other episodes of how to get a seven on your IA. And if this video helps you out at all or helps you with your IA, please make sure you drop a like on the video. Also make sure you check out the Twitter and Instagram links below. Often I post some things, especially on Instagram, of my students doing pracs, might give you some good ideas for your IA. So part two. Part two is where we look at the exploration. Now the exploration essentially contains your background information, your methodology to answer your research question, and then any safety or ethical considerations that you needed to take into account during your investigation. So what you want to have in your exploration is you want to have accurate background information, accurate and relevant. So by relevant, we mean it needs to assist the understanding of the reader. So if you're putting in information and you're doing a redox reaction, you would want to include things like oxidation and reduction. But if you're doing a titration, then there would be no need to put in anything about a galvanic cell. So you need to make sure that your introduction is relevant and it aids understanding. Make sure you get someone to read your background and ask them, is it relevant to my investigation? And does that help you understand what I'm going to do? After you've written your background information, you want to state your research question really, really clearly. And in the last video, we talked about how to state a research question. How does X affect Y? After you've stated your research question, you want to clearly define your variables. So your independent variable, the thing that you will be changing, and then your dependent variable, what you will be measuring. After you've stated your variables, your independent and dependent, it might also be a good idea to mention the controlled variables. So what things are you going to keep controlled during your investigation? After you've presented your variables, you want to start with your methodology. So you present the method. Now what you want to focus on during the method is describing how your independent variable will be manipulated. You want to make that really clear. How are you changing that independent variable? The next thing you want to make sure you do in your method is allow for the collection of sufficient data. So sufficient data to allow you to accurately draw a conclusion for your research question. Now sufficient data, what I take to be sufficient data, is five changes to the independent variable. So you want to change that variable five times and you want to have at least five repeats for each of those variables. So you could be looking it up to 25 different trials, but that allows for sufficient data and it also allows for you to be accurate. So if you're getting values that are widely changing, then you don't really want to present those. They're not accurate data. So you want to keep doing this process until you believe that you have accurate data. Also in your method, make sure you're using appropriate apparatus and glassware, especially the glassware. One of the biggest flaws will be students will use a beaker to measure out a, an amount in a volume rather than using a pipette or a measuring cylinder. So make sure you're using the most accurate piece of glassware that you have access to. After you've presented your method, you need to include some safety information. Now, if you're looking for safety information for chemicals, an easy thing to do is type in MSDS and the chemical that you're after. The MSDS provides you with a lot of safety information, including handling, storage, and some of the safety procedures that you should take. You should mention some safety information about all the chemicals that you use in your investigation. So some things to avoid in the exploration. You want to make sure that you don't have any irrelevant background information. So if it's not going to help aid the understanding, get rid of it. Inconsistency with the units. When students write methods, they often have an inconsistency with the units they're using. Are they using centimetres cubed? Are they using litres? Are they using volume in metres cubed? You need to be consistent. Masses in grams or kilograms. Be consistent with your units. Another thing that a lot of students miss is temperature control. So you need to make sure that you control the temperature in your reactions and you do that as best you can using a thermometer. So measure the temperature, include that in your tables. Now before you are submitting your IA, think about the master chef analogy. Your teacher can only read and only assess you on what is written in your method. Now even if you did something completely different and gathered loads and loads of data, 
If it's not specified that you need to repeat the process in the method, then we simply cannot see that. So you need to make sure that you are writing exactly what you are going to do or what you have done. So make sure you check that before you submit. Thanks for watching guys, don't forget, drop a like on the video, subscribe for more, and I'll see you for part three where we look at the analysis.